Good morning, people. Welcome back to the channel. It's Chrissy Sawyer here. Um, thank you very much for your recent likes and subs and uh, comments. I love your comments. Um, I'm just sensing some messages coming through today, so I'm just going to do a quick collective read. Um, and first card out is time for a quantum leap. Um, <laughs> We have got a ton of energy going on in the system. Um, there are destiny points being activated um, and it's gonna be writ large, like you won't miss it. You won't miss it. Um, mm. <laughs> I'm hearing, uh, hear the clanging bells of change. And so there's a, a query in there to, to listen and how do you listen? Um, how do you tune in and really listen above the ego, beyond fear? Because quantum leap is gonna challenge everything. Um, it's gonna challenge your perceptions. <laughs> like down to the core. Like what is love? Like what is light? And is light all that it's cracked up to be? What is dark? What is a lie? What lies am I telling myself? It's gonna challenge everything to move us. <laughs> we only evolve on the point of extinction. And that might be something like the extinction of an old belief, the extinction of an old karmic contract, the extinction of family ancestral karma. Yeah, and there's the thing about expectation with quantum leap, because that's going to challenge your perception. Because depending on where you are on your journey, I mean, the, the energy at the moment is shit or bust. <laughs> um, and so for me, my North Node is being activated and that's colossal change. So how's that gonna affect me? Well, I, I can drop into fear and I can uh, go back and be my small self, or I can take that quantum leap onto another tectonic plate, which is still wobbly, which is still molten. So what are my expectations around that? What if I just drop all expectation and dance like a fool? I've been saying this for months and months and months. If I just dance like a fool and see where the energy takes me, just, you know, ride that firm and trust. <laughs> There's an amount of blind trust coming. <laughs> oh, wow. These cards are just coming straight off the bottom of the deck now. Your charge is to enlarge. And, you know, we came here to experience joy and bliss and being that innocent child. You know, all of my work is about the grown wounded child. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I just wore for my breakfast. Um, the grown wounded child and the resurrection of the wounded child, the resurrection of joy and passion, the healing of the sacral chakra and the rebuilding of the foundation at the base to improve the connection to your destiny point, your point of light. <laughs> so there's a question, isn't there? Time for a quantum leap. Will you say yes? I think I said in a video recently, was it yesterday? I don't know, Monday. JFDI, just fudging do it, just do it. <laughs> Be a human exclamation mark. Who are you, what, you, what do you do? I don't know, <laughs> I can't define me, so there's no way that you can. Okay, so let's just try and bring this down a little bit into some kind of something. Um, to make it more, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
chameleon will blend to the environment, act as if. Act as if you already belong, act as if you are already synchronous to the environment, as if you are already connected, act as if you made that happen. Enlarge. This is the challenge to stop thinking small. Cause and effect. I am the cause. That is the effect. You are the architect. Act as if. I think I started saying last June, dream big and then dream bigger. Because it's going to blow your mind. Speaking from experience, it's blowing my mind. <laughs> Peacock, let your beauty shine. Predicates upon the responsibility to own your beauty to begin with. Do you own your beauty? Can you see your beauty? Everybody has it. Everybody, everybody has it. And do you hide it? Do you wear that crown and fan your tail out behind you? Or is there still a bit of a wiggle about attracting that much attention, about being magnificent? Mag. <laughs> Expand. Wow, look at this with synchronicity. When you dance like a fool, you will be guided. So trust in the divine details and to be able to trust, you really got to know yourself. You've got to be moving in a place of joy and just connected beauty, passion. This whole reading just feels very rich in energy. It feels, it's not the word. Comforting and edgy all at the same time. But more, feels more like an adventure than a challenge that you've got to do. Yeah, it takes me back to meaningless joy, purposeless joy. Because that's all about expectation, isn't it? It's got to have meaning, it's got to have purpose. Sometimes it's got to, well, most of the time, it's got to have a bottom line. But we're in a paradigm shifting time. And what if we let go of that? What else can arise? Well, I don't know. I can't see beyond that. Then leap. <laughs> wow. Then leap. Be the bridge <laughs> for yourself. Expand your consciousness to behold both worlds. And I know so many people who literally have one foot on different plates at the moment. I'm seeing a lovely uh, visual of um, kind of catching a therm and it's this beautiful upward spiral of energy but I've still got one foot on the ground, kind of toes dug in, but I'm enjoying the upward movement and what will happen if I just let go. Just let go. Because that begs the bigger question of actually, how is that serving me? Well, I might be making my foot ache. I might be rooting into something that isn't really letting me fly. So there's a real letting go here. I'm going to pull a surrender card. I'm gonna pull two or three surrender cards because I'm pulling different storylines out here. We're not all gonna be in the same place. Um, give me some surrender cards for the collective that are here. For the collective that are gonna be what, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. That one's upside down, so I'll take that. Yeah, wow. OK. 
Okay. Oh gosh, <clears throat> this card has been out so many times this year. <laughs> And these two connect. I'm going to bring them in together. Okay. So it's scarcity consciousness that prevents the receiving of love. <clears throat> scarcity consciousness will cause that foot to lock into the earth because the foot knows the earth. And there's a lot of narrative in the field at the moment around, but it just doesn't happen for me. It won't happen for me. Okay, so you're the manifesto, so. So that's what's gonna manifest, all right? Um, there's a lot of uh, spiritual exhaustion of trying and failing and trying and failing, but that in itself is a process of perfection, and it's a process of refinement. It's a process of slowly burning down the forest of old beliefs. And so how do you receive support? Well, do you ask? Can you stand in that moment of vulnerability and let someone else hold you and guide you and support you just until you can take that next step? Do you allow that? Or does the mind come in and figure some other way of working it out? Fix, solve, mend tends not to fix, solve, mend. Because in this long journey of coming in and trying to fix it and fix it, well, A, the assumption is made that it's broken. Okay. But B, that becomes a massive distraction. And what if? Everything that your higher self puts on your path, everything that your, your knowing, your gnosis puts on your path is for you. No matter what that is, is for you. And you can surrender to it. Because if you believe that you're not loved and supported, that is what's going to manifest, especially now. This is cracky. It feels like doing. <laughs> I think it in doing. Yeah. And there was another one, which was here, the upside down one. Okay, so still breaking down po poverty consciousness, which is ingrained in the psyche. Um, but we're coming out of that. Um, and that's a big shift to surrender your belief in scarcity. You know, if you go to the, um, the law of polarity, there are no two opposites that cannot be reconciled, which means... There is no situation that cannot be reframed because reality is just perception. Okay. So wherever your scarcity thinking is anchored into, just turn the mind, just turn the mind and make it look at it in a different way. And what if you add just a couple of drops of trust into that, then how different does it look? So what if you just look around you at actually what does support you and open the heart to that, to receive and acknowledge that, to realize that, integrate it at resonance level. So that's dropping seeds in it, that's cultivating. I am loved, I am held, I am supported. Once that becomes your outgoing broadcast, guess what's going to show up in your world? <laughs> okay, this is a doozy. Um, surrender your need to always be right. This comes from fear and insecurity. It comes from a rigid mind that's afraid to take that quantum leap and to really, really expand. Brilliant, yeah. Um, when I'm working in group facilitation, there's a game I love to play, which is called What If? So when the mind gets all rigid and moves into fear because it's being presented with something radically and fundamentally different, 
we play what if and it's just a series of questions that allow the blinkers to come off and the mind to expand and where it ends up is just this playpen sandpit with toys and Meccano where we're building something where we don't know what it is but what if I could be what if I could be abundant what would that feel like okay and what if I was fully supported? And what if I could expand my consciousness into worlds I don't yet know of? What if? See, the energy is takes you up. Oh, I can't. <laughs> what if? So, you know, I might argue that right and wrong are subjective. They are a human construct designed to create division and power. So when you challenge that and let go of what you perceive to be right and wrong, then you move to the soul's experience, you move to the heart experience, and it's just about what we can bear. What was that experience? Oh, wow, okay. Make room for wonderment. Where is there room for wonderment? I'm just pulling these off the bottom of the deck. This is what's coming. It is the return of you as master, as master builder, as active intelligence source code. No barriers to what you can create. There are no barriers. Okay, now what was this? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm being taken back to the Divine Detours card. So the Divine Detours card might sometimes be designed actually to, <laughs> to punch you in the trust. <laughs> to just go, oh, how strong is that? Because if a Divine Detour comes in, that can literally be, um, well, in the 3D world, that might look like something that's appeared on your radar that's got you quite excited, but then just doesn't come to anything. In that moment, you can reach into scarcity. It never happens for me. That will deplete your resource. Or you can reach in, oh, okay, that wasn't for me. Move on. Quantum leap, where am I going? Tune in, where am I going? So surrender to trust. We're going to need it now because shit's going to get weird. I absolutely know that. Shit is getting weird. Like, Yeah, I'm just going to keep drawing these. This Compete Compare program is being dissolved. Um, we can't keep doing this to ourselves. It's poison. Don't compare yourself to others because that stops you being unique. It stops you being unique. Yeah, completely. Challenge your perspective, challenge it. Because we have a choice of 360 degrees, we can just look at it from really, really <laughs> different viewpoints. And the event will still be the same, but how we perceive it is what creates our reality. So when we change the perception, we change the reality. This is just basic physics here. Okay, I'm gonna start wrapping this up. Is there anything else we need? Something about abundance. All right, well, let's go as wide as we can with this then. Paint me a picture of abundance, please, which deck do you want to use? I'm gonna use the abundance deck. Paint me a picture of our potential for abundance. Solar plexus is lighting up. My heart is lighting up. My throat is lighting up. There's this whoosh of energy. My oh gosh, my feet are fizzing. There's the picture of abundance, just an alive system connected. Wow. Oh, that's going crazy. Okay, let's have a look at these. 
Yes. Oh. <laughs> Oh, sometimes learning to surrender can feel like you're dying. That's what's happening. Dying to the old, waking to the new. So when I say paint me a picture of abundance, surrender, let go. Let go. I'm seeing exhausted people this week suddenly realize how exhausted they are. Let go, give in. Give in. The 10 days prior to Lionsgate, my mantra was give in, Chrissy. Just give in. Just collapse and fall and give in. That's how I held myself in what I knew was going to be a big shift. It's going to be a huge shift. The ego learns what's hardest. The ego learns what's hardest. Because it's full of its own self importance. <laughs> It's overworked and it's hardwired to overwork. So stop trying to control the whole universe. Surrender. Surrender to quantum leap. Yes. In. Tuition. The school is within. Everything you need, every textbook, every module of learning is within intuition. Teach yourself and be guided because you're not alone. None of us are alone. Intuition, each person's road to the inner landscape is extraordinary and personal. So stop comparing yourself because you are extraordinary. How liberating to listen inside and sense moment to moment what is needed. That's why you've got to let go of the busy mind that wants you busy all the time, doingness all the time. Beingness is where the new blueprints are going to get made. What now? Wait. We have path to show up. Now, if you look at the image of the hermit card, this is the hermit card. The hermit has a lantern and walks his own path. And the lantern only shines a light on the next little bit. This is the training to come into the moment. Okay. Let go of your need to control the whole universe. Oh, what's your five year plan? Oh my God. That is a kiss of death. That's a kiss of death. That puts expectation on you, obligation on you, responsibility on you. And in the end, it will become a should. It will become a should. Yeah. So light your own path by going within and trusting and trusting and trusting no matter how bizarre trusting and taking action. Help me trust that there's a plan far beyond what I can see through my own fears and illusions. Yeah, there is. There is. I speak from experience. Um, seriously, I don't do the love and light dance. Uh, it's all a bit woolly. Um, I do physics and science with love and compassion. That's my equation. Um, and personal power comes from intuition and taking action to be divergent. That's my message for today. Taking action to be divergent. Hmm. Okay. Right, okay. So I just want to presence that my uh, uh, formed mind that thinks it knows best doesn't want to bring this last abundance card because it doesn't want to disappoint, all right? So you've heard me talk about willful disappointment. So in order for me to change and become the majestic peacock that I am, I'm gonna have to disappoint how I have projected myself onto you. I'm gonna have to disappoint you 
because there might be things I say that are blunt and jarring. Um, there might be things I say and do that actually no longer support you because it's, I want to move out of a codependent relationship, blah, blah, blah. There's a thousand options. So I'm just going to transcend that. You go, it need to please. Now I'm going to bring you loss. Because we are quantum challenging mind programming. Quantum challenging. Sometimes you learn true offering through loss. And that might be the difference between offering to self before offering to another. It's like when the plane's going down, you don't put a mask on somebody else first, you put it on yourself first, and then you look around. You make a passionate invitation for love to take over and bring her own plan, because God is a woman, <laughs> instead of the egos, okay? So this is the divine blueprint coming in. This is got the dove of peace here. This is purity and innocence. This is high heart chakra. The joy and innocence of the powerful child, born again. So the loss is when we let go. The loss is when we let go. Yeah, lovely question there. What's on the other side of your fear? And what gold can you find in your fear when you fearlessly move through it? Shake its hand. Take the lesson, move through. It's okay to feel lost. It's good to feel lost. Yeah. <laughs> Surrender fear, but sometimes it's about being with it because it's part of you, integrating it, lifting it up. Come on, let's go and play. Best thing I ever did in my 30 year journey of transcendence, expansion, growth is to take my ego by the hand and say, we're going on a long journey and some of it you're not gonna like, <laughs> but walk with me, let's go and play. So that slowly, slowly, I'm able to coax it. Last card for the reading. Surrender to what is now. What is now can be the difference between a massive wave of fear hitting you and actually just doing a quick here now audit Bills pay, food in the fridge, family healthy, roof over your head, <laughs> water in the tap. <laughs> so where's the fear? It's a reality check. Surrender to what is. Flow with what is instead of fighting it. The ego is trained to fight it because the ego's main task is to maintain the status quo. We are no longer in a status quo. We haven't been for some time. It's falling down. The paradigms are dissolving. And we need to dissolve with it. Everything that's held us in those paradigms. When you can't change a situation compassionately, accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace. So meeting the fear with compassion. And with my compassion for all that you're going through. And with my deep bow to the fearlessness that's present. And with my absolute belief that peacock feathers will fly, let it be. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Please like, share, subscribe, drop me a comment. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.